Did inflation peak? The stock market seems to think it did, as it rallied powerfully since the CPI inflation readings came out on Wednesday. In this video, I'm first going to take a look at the CPIU inflation and go over what the stock market saw that sent it flying. Second, I'm going to take a look at core CPI, which is a more important metric that the Fed looks at for its rate decisions that excludes food and energy. Third, I'm going to discuss where I think the S&P 500 is heading next. And finally, I'm going to go over my game plan for investing in this market. All this right after. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Learn to invest like a wolf at your own risk. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Wolves of Investing. My name is Donnie Nguyen and I'm the founder of Wolves of Investing. If you're new, I talk about stocks, SPACs, Bitcoin, options, and anything on my mind related to investing. If you wanna learn how to achieve financial freedom through investing, be sure to click on that subscribe button and notification bell if you haven't yet. And please remember to drop a like if you enjoy this video as it truly helps out the channel. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to look at and the reason that the stock market went nuts the past few trading days is the CPIU. This is published by the Bureau of Labor Statistics at bls.gov. And as you can see here, the year over year change was 8.5%. But that's not the interesting part. The real interesting part was the month over month decrease in the CPIU. When we look at this table, also published at bls.gov, as you can see, it dropped from 296.311 to 296.276 from June to July for a tiny decrease of 0.01%. We haven't seen a month over month decrease in the CPIU for 21 months since November of 2020. This really got the stock market fired up. From the market's close on Tuesday before the inflation reading was published to Friday's close, the S&P 500 was up 3.8%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 3%. The NASDAQ Composite was up 4.4%. The NASDAQ 100 was up 4.3%. And for all of you Kathy Wood fans out there, her flagship ARK Innovation ETF, the ARKK, was up 8.3%. All right, so the CPIU reading was very promising. However, if you've been following the Fed, you know that they don't care that much about the CPIU, which includes food and energy. What the Fed really cares about is core inflation, which excludes food and energy, since their policies don't have control over the price of food and energy, which is the supply side of inflation. The Fed's policies are intended to affect the demand side of inflation, which is measured by core CPI. So if we look at core CPI, year over year growth was 5.9%, which is still well above the Fed's 2% target. But month over month was 0.328%. If we annualize that rate, it's 4%. The June month over month rate was 0.743% for an annualized rate of 9.3%. So the annualized rate of inflation for core CPI did drop dramatically by over 50%, which could mean that the Fed's rate hikes are actually working. And more importantly, that the Fed might not need to hike as much as the market first anticipated. Just a couple of months ago, most bears thought that the Fed would have to hike rates above 4%. With the federal funds rate currently at 2.25 to 2.5%, they might not even have to hike above 3.5% before inflation gets under control. In longer term, the Fed might even be able to keep rates under 3%. Generally speaking, lower rates means higher stock prices. 
especially on the 10-year Treasury, which was between 2.8 and 2.9% on Friday. So what does this all mean for the stock market? And where do we go from here? As I talked about in a previous video, the S&P 500 is at a critical juncture. It just broke through its 50% retracement level, but it still has one more major retracement level it needs to break through in order for me to have more conviction that this bear market is truly over and that we're not just in a bear market rally. That level is the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement, which is approximately 4366. In my opinion, if the S&P 500 can close above 4366 and hold above that level for a couple of trading days, we most likely saw the bear market low in June. In addition to that 61.8 retracement level, the S&P 500 has two more huge areas of resistance in the 200 day moving average and this downward facing trend line. So it's going to be a very interesting next few weeks in the stock market. So what is my game plan? I actually took advantage of the market's big up move this past week, raising more sideline cash. And I also decided to trim one of my more speculative holdings and rotate it into two stocks from my watch list. I trimmed some of my position in Dutch Bros for a profit. Fortunately, I was able to buy some Dutch Bros when it took a massive hit down to the $20 level. And that's the only reason I was able to sell some of my shares for a profit. And then I finally pulled the trigger on Blackstone and Home Depot in my Roth IRA. In a previous video, I mentioned that I was hoping to start my position in both of those stocks at fire sale prices if the market tanked. But I think that that possibility might be fading. Even with those purchases, I actually increased my sideline cash position since I sold more of my Dutch Bro stock than I bought of Blackstone and Home Depot. I'm still not fully convinced that this isn't just a bear market rally and I would really like to see the S&P 500 take that 4366 level before I really change my mind. Before the July inflation reading came out, I thought that there was around a 60% chance that this was just a bear market rally. But now, I think that there's only around a 50% chance. There's still the July core PCE inflation reading coming out later this month, which the Fed really likes to look at, even more than CPI. And there's an August CPI coming out before the Fed's next meeting. So those numbers, as well as a number of geopolitical or other shocking events could still rock the markets. But if the S&P 500 does break out above the 4366 level, I might consider buying some more stocks from my watch list, such as Mid-America Apartment Communities, ticker MAA, Warner Music Group, ticker WMG, and Blue Owl Capital, ticker OWL. All three of those stocks pay dividends, so they could be a good addition to my Roth IRA. After that, if the market continues to rise, I plan to replenish my sideline cash to around 15-20% to 20 in my individual stock portfolios before going back into dollar cost averaging mode. For my index funds like the S&P 500 or the Russell 1000, as I mentioned in a previous video, I don't really mess with them. I just keep dollar cost averaging into them and I don't even think about trading them since the most important thing with broad based index funds is time in the market, not time ming the market. All right, so thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. Let me know where you think inflation is heading. Drop me a line in the comments. Be sure to leave a like on this video before leaving. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.